All right, let's get into the five best hip hop diss tracks of all time, best five rap diss tracks of all time, whatever you want to call it, it's cool. Either way, y'all can drop a comment, let me know what you feel, whether you agree or not, or what your list would be. But um, let's get right into it. So for me, number five, after a lot of thinking, I would say it would be uh, Jay-Z Takeover. And that was when uh, Jay-Z was this in Nas and Prodigy on that track on this album. Uh, one notable line would be... I got money stacks bigger than you. When I was pushing weight back in 88, you was a ballerina. I got the pictures, I seen you. Then you dropped shook one, switch your demeanor. Well, we don't believe you. You need more people. I was just going that prodigy, and he actually performed that shit live with, uh, I believe it was like 97 concert or some shit like that with the picture next to him while he dropped that line, which was kind of savage. That's why I have him at number five. Also, another line he had is uh, aimed at Nas. That line was pretty savage as shit where he said, uh, One was nah, the other was Illmatic. That's a one hot album every 10 year average, and that's so. Are you kidding me? So you can see why I put him at number five. Now let's get into my pick for number four, and that would be uh, No Vaseline by Ice Cube. That was when Ice Cube ended up leaving NWA, and he just dissed everybody, including their manager, and uh, just destroyed everybody. Now, uh, if you don't know, like, NWA was Dr. Dre, Easy, Ice Cube, DJ Yella, and MC Ren. And uh, they had, like, Arabian Prince. I don't know if that was before or after. I can't remember right now off the top. But either way, like, when he wrote that track, he went off. So one of the bars was... Living with the whites, one big house, and not another nigga in sight. I started off with too much cargo, drop four niggas, now I'm making all the dope. Then another one was Yellow Boys on your team, so you're losing A.O. Dre stick to producing, because he wrote half their rhymes on the fucking tracks before. Then he says, You're getting cut real quick and easy dick. It's not like MC Wynn shit. Like, are you kidding me, dude? He even went at Jerry Heller. Gang bang by your manager, fella. Get money out your ass. Like a motherfucking ready teller. So, like, that's... The, he, he just went in full savage mode. That's number four for sure. Uh, now getting in number three would be, I would say, M Nail in the Coffin. That was when them and Benzino had their little beef, whatever. They had, like, literally probably... 10 20 tracks going back at each other this wasn't even the first response this was maybe number three i think but uh the track's called nail in the coffin and it's one of the four dish tracks that was released on uh like the invasion mixtapes if you guys remember that crap and uh the reason i put it is because like it had a big 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 influence on me this was when i was crazy in the hip-hop so one of the bars was like Sell them out of the trunk of your tracer Spending your whole paycheck to disc makers What you know about being bullied over half your life Oh, that's right You should know what that's like You're half white Like, I'm, the whole track is just murder But that bar just stuck with me forever Like, he just ripped him to shreds there So that's number three for me Now let's go into number two Which would be Tupac hit him up and that was after Pac got shot like five times in the studio in New York in like 94. He came with a diss track basically called Hit Em Up. That bad boy rips Biggie, Diddy, Junior Mafia, Lil C's, Lil Kim, all of them, which is Junior Mafia, right? But uh, he just goes ape in that. And uh, one lyric he had was like, First don't fuck your bitch in the click you claim. West side when we ride, come equipped with game. You claim to be a player, but I fucked your wife. And yeah, he just goes off. And that's basically him talking about how he fucked Faith Evans, who was Big's wife at the time, right? So uh, that just full savage mode. Like, he goes even more into it, but that's number two for me. So now getting into the final one, number one would be Nas Ether. That's just me, personal opinion. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, whatever. But uh, that's just me. That's my personal opinion. So... It just had a heavy influence on me because, like, I grew up a big Nas fan when I was a kid, right? And that was between the beef that he had with Jay-Z, which was at number five for me. So this was basically Nas's rebuttal to that diss track when Jay-Z dissed him on the takeover where he did the first two verses in that Prodigy, 16 bars, and then 32 bars, one verse in that Nas. So Nas came here and just kind of, I think, ended it. And 
one notable bar for me would be like bars is that this gazy and cockafella records wanted beef started cocking up my weapon slowly loading up this ammo to explode it on a camel and his soldiers like even clowned and saying that he looked like joe camel like that shit was too much and then um he even says i can handle this for dolo and his manuscript just sounds stupid when krs already made an album called blueprint first like are you kidding me and then to take it even further like just to chop up the label he's like is he dame diddy dame daddy a dame dummy oh i get it you biggie and he's puffy yeah. rockefeller died of age that was the end of his chapter and that's the guy i chose to name your company after oh uh, yeah that's too much savageness man that was number one for me so i don't know what you guys think hopefully you agree if not drop a comment make sure you hit like make sure you hit subscribe and uh easy peace